All right, in this session, we're going to talk about extracting the metadata. The biggest, maybe uh, biggest stumbling block in uh, getting things, getting folder files into cell profiler. Um, but we're going to attack this with the magic of something called regex. And regex is, uh, means regular expressions. So it's a way, it's just like a little computer instructional code for looking at file names and getting information out of them. So if we remember our file names that come from the incel are these really unwieldy, <laughs> strange kinds of setups with white spaces and parentheses and they're all very weird, but we can extract metadata out of them. So that's that big gobbledygook right here. So what is this big gobbledygook? Well, Let's find out using uh, regex101, the regex tester uh, browser program, which is really helpful. Um, and I'm going to just talk you through the major players that we need to be aware of here. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is uh, tell regex that we're going to start doing something. And we do that with a little caret. So it says, all right asserts the position of the start of a line. Right, this is where we start. So look at the file name, we're gonna start here. And then the first thing we're gonna do is um, define a capture group. So the first thing that we have here in our file name is a B. And that B uh, corresponds to the row. So in a 96 well plate, you'll have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, F, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Um, in a 384 well plate, it goes all the way up to P. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is define what's called a capture group. So a capture group, the name suggests, is like a group of symbols that you're going to capture, and then you're going to give that, um, you're going to define that to be something. So to start that off, we're going to go uh, parentheses, question mark, P. So we're going to start a capture group. That's that's what that's what tells it to uh, begin that process. Then we're going to go um, whatever you call this. Uh, pe people call this different things, and I can never remember what it's called in the UK. Um, the little alligator mouth. Uh, and so we're going to say, okay, this capture group that I'm about to tell you what it is, I want to give it a name, and the name that I want to give it is uh, row in this case because we're looking for the row, but you could call it anything you wanted. Um, so row, and then now we need to tell it what to look for. So here we're going to tell it to look for a letter. We don't want to tell it look for B because there's row B, there's row C, there's row D. We want to tell it to look for a letter. Um, and specifically it's an uppercase letter. So there's a quick reference guide of all the things that you could tell it to look for. So any character, any character um, in the range of A to Z, that's uppercase, any character in the range of A to Z that's lowercase, um, a character that's not uh, lowercase a to Z, etc. So let's tell it to look for an uppercase letter between A and Z. And now we have to tell it how many of those, how many of those do we want to find? So we tell it what to look for. So we, we give it a name with uh, these greater than less thans. Uh, we tell it what to look for with the square brackets. And again, if you if you mouse over, um, it tells you what you've just done. So range matches a single character in the range between A and Z, case sensitive. Uh, and let's tell it with now curly brackets, how many letters do we want it to look for? Um, in this case, it's all one. Uh, it doesn't have to be one. It could be two, it could be three, it could be one to three, um, but we're just gonna tell it look for one here and then close parentheses to finish it out. And now we can see what we've done. So we've got a named capture group and the name that we've given it is row. And it's uh, looking for a capital letter and it's looking for one of them. And again, that tells you this over here in this box. Uh, it lights up over here, capture group one. It says, ah, it's row and it's row's name is B. Okay, so what? comes next. So now we've got some white spaces. So we can't, in a regex, we can't just hit a space, unfortunately. We need to, um, we need to tell it that, like, it's looking for a white space. Uh, and the way that we do that is 
uh, any white space characters. So it's slash uh, slash X. Where's my slash on here actually? Slash S. Um, and the direction of the slash matters. Uh, make sure that's the, the correct direction. So now you can see what, what's happened here is that it's it's scanned along and it's just like, okay, yeah, I see a white space character. Cool, cool. Fine, keep going. And then a dash. Yep, I see the dash. And then another white space character, another white space. And now we're ready to start a new capture group because this file nomenclature is B is the row and two is the column. So we're going to do another capture group and capture group, start capture group um, with parentheses to start an operation, question mark P. Then let's call that column. And now what are we looking for? So we're here, we're looking for uh, digits. So numbers uh, between zero and nine, and we're looking for two of them. <clears throat> And that with the parentheses. And now we've got um, two things that have been captured. So we've got row has been captured and column has been captured. Okay, so now we want it to just keep scanning along. Um, now this is where it gets a little bit annoying. So we want to we want it to to just skip uh, the character of parentheses. Um, so we can't we can't just put parentheses here. We can't tell it just like oh scan along and find find parentheses because now it's like oh wait no no parentheses is my symbol to like to do a thing. Um, so we're gonna have to go slash parentheses. And now it says all right yeah yeah okay oh slash parentheses that's just like a string that's just a parentheses that's in the file name not like my clue to start doing something. Um, so they all say uh, parentheses fld so let's just skip that and then there's another space. So skipping all of that, and now we're looking for a new thing, and the new thing that we're looking for is the field of view. So we'll start a new capture group. We call that field. You can call it FOV. Call it Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Whatever you want. Um, I think calling it field or FOV makes the most sense uh, in this case. And what are we looking for now? So we're looking again for some digits, and we're looking for two of them. Okay, so now it's given us our row is B, our column is two, and our field is one. Um, this, this uh, file names are giving us like field 01, 02, you know, because we could go up to 10 or 20. Um, it might not be the case. You might have a nomenclature where sometimes it, you know, it's, it's one, two, three, four, and then it's 10, 11, 12. Um, but sometimes it's one and sometimes it's it's two. So you could tell it uh, look for either one or two numerals. Um, but here, fortunately, it's always two. But this is something to really think about when you're doing anything where you want to extract metadata. If you have um, rows or columns or fields with different numbers of digits, it's easier to in the long run for you to call like uh, field number one or, or row or column number one or image number one to call it 01 if you've got between one and 99 if you've got between one and 300 then you'd want to call it 001 002 uh, because then you can always tell your regex when when it's looking for metadata that it's looking for like a three digit number for example um this also helps <coughs> Um, when you do some sorting, because it's going to sort things uh, numerically, not do the thing where it goes 1, 10, 11. Okay. Now we've got uh, some more things that we want to ignore. So we've got a space. We've got WV, which I guess in the incel language means wavelength, which it's a strange thing to call that. So maybe it's German. And then here now we want the capture group uh, of our fluorophore. And here's where this gets a little bit hairy because the fluorophore, it could be uh, capital C, lowercase y, three. It could be all caps D A P I. Um, it could be F I T C. It could be bright field. It, it, there's a lot of things that it could be. So we want to cover all of our bases here in this capture group. So we'll say fluorophore. 
Okay, we're giving it a name, fluorophore. And now we're going to say, all right, look for, it could be a capital letter. It could be a lowercase letter. It could be a numeral in any combination. And it could be three, there could be four, there could be 10. Let's, the, I think the longest thing is bright field, so that's eight. So look for any combination of things from one to eight. Um, oh, and then what's happened here? Oh, just me making a, a typo, so zero to nine. And now it's got a capture group, and now our capture group is floor four, side three. So if I change this to Dappy, it's still fine. It's still finding Dappy. It could be some obscure series of letters, but you know what? I've told it just look for the first eight. So it's just going to always find the first eight there. Uh, and I could change that again by saying find the first 12 or whatever. So everything to the right of this, we don't really care about. Um, so we don't need to include it in the capture group. But if there are any mistakes here, the whole thing is just going to break. Ah, it didn't find anything. So what's happened here? You're like, oh, it's not finding my row. It's not finding my column. It's not finding anything. But that's because there's a problem. It's looking in the capture group of column. Instead of looking for two numerals, it's looking for three numerals. And that's just not the case. There's, there's not three numerals there. Uh, there's two numerals and then a parentheses. If there were three, Fine, it would find it, no problem. Uh, but if there's not, it doesn't find it. So this regex tester is super helpful um, for uh, extracting metadata. So I said that when we uh, save our images, our cropped and corrected images, we could save them as whatever we wanted. So I've given them names that I think are, are easy to use. Uh, more easy to use than these. <clears throat> so let's try those and make a regex of them because you will need that for your subsequent um, cell profiler pipelines. So B0201, cell three, bcna.tiff is my file name. Okay, so I'm going to want to change a lot of things around here. So again, row, uh, not such a big deal because here it is. Uh, that's just the same, it's just B. So now there's an underscore that I want to ignore. Give another capture group, and that was column. And here it's looking for a numeral, and it's looking for two numerals. And there's another underscore that we skip. Name another capture group, call it field. And it's looking for, again, numerals, and it's looking for two of them. Um, the grammar is like, uh, it's not exactly like English grammar, right? Because we'd say, look for two numerals. And here we're saying, look for numerals, two, which I'm sure there's some language where, uh, where that is actually how um, sentences are constructed. And again, now for floor four, we'll make another capture group. And here we're looking for, um, I think I've given them all capital letters. So A to Z and zero to nine. Oh, I didn't tell it how many, so it defaults to one. Uh, and here it's, I, I've given them all three letters. So instead of DAPI, I just called it DAP. And instead of, uh, well, I mean, side three is just side three, but it, the FITSI is another option. I might just call that FIT. And the reason I did that is just to make this regex a little bit easier for myself. Uh, okay, and then you could even add another capture group if you wanted to. Um, uh, and tell it what you what, uh, what what you're actually looking for in the channel, but all we really need for cell profiler are these at this stage, so that's sufficient. We don't need to keep scanning along this file name. Then what we can do is to copy uh, 
and we can paste that in. So we've exited the pipeline. <coughs> and now we do is drag these files in. We're ready to go. Let's see what happens. Oh, see, and it's extracted the metadata. Out column, row, field of view, well, and floor four. Um, and now we are ready to go and start a new pipeline. 